Hi, my name is Monique Garcia, and I'm the founder of Browsthetics Microblading Training Academy, and I'm a master trainer for Beauty Angels Academy. Today, I'm going to be showing you how I do an ombre powder brow from start to finish. All right, so we're starting off with washing the hands. You want to make sure that the water is as hot as you can bear it. Um, you can apply soap. It doesn't need to be antibacterial soap. It can be any type of soap because by creating the suds and a good lather, that's what actually gets rid of the bacteria on your hands. So you want to make sure that you're scrubbing and cleaning um, for at least 30 seconds here, getting your wrists and um, making sure that you are cleaning your hands as thoroughly as you can. From there, you're going to rinse and once you're finished rinsing, you're going to get a paper towel and dry your hands. And once you've completely dried your hands, you're then going to use that paper towel to shut off the, um, what are those called? Handles? The faucet. Yeah, the faucet. So I am getting the paper towel, drying my hands thoroughly because it's really hard to put gloves on if your hands are wet so you want to make sure that you dry them really really well from there you're going to turn off the faucet with the paper towel not with your bare hands you're then going to use your step to open the trash can toss the paper towel and put your gloves on now we're looking at our client and we can evaluate her brows. You should be evaluating everything before you start. We're looking at to see if her brows are balanced, if she has good asymmetry. Um, well, not good asymmetry, but asymmetry in general. Um, we're just evaluating her eyebrows before we start. You're going to take an alcohol swab and you're going to swab your client's skin. Um, this is recommended by the Board of Health because it kills any type of bacteria that might be on the skin and it sanitizes the skin as well. So after you've done this, I personally really like to do it because it also removes oils that could be on the client's skin, which make it difficult to draw. Now I'm finding the center of her, um, her brows by using the bridge of her nose. I don't use the tip of the nose because when you use the tip of the nose, the line can be uh, crooked. I then apply my brow ruler and I center it with my middle line and then I place it on my client's forehead. I want to make sure that it's evenly placed across the forehead, that it's not tilted in any way before you place it. Alrighty, after I've placed that, we're going to start measuring out the points. And uh, the, what I do first is I grab my compass and with the big legs, I measure the sclera, which is the white part of her brow. And then I place the small leg on the middle line and I mark the brow beginning on one side. I'm then going to repeat the same thing on the other side to get the brow beginnings. Her brow hair pretty much starts right where it should anyway, um, which makes it nice. And so you want to draw those lines straight up and down as best you can. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find uh, the bottom of the brow, which I use a supraorbital cavity. There is a cavity that I use my pinky to find. You will see this in every single video that I do. I never, ever, ever skip this part. I use my pinky, I place it in that cavity, and then I mark the brow bottom. This is extremely important to do, especially if you have clients that have alopecia and you're trying to figure out where you should place the brow. We always want to use their bone structure to decide where the brow should go. So that's what I always do. I never, ever, ever skip this step. This is something that never changes no matter who I'm brow mapping. So once you've got your two lines drawn there, you want to make sure that they're accurate and double check 
the line is going to be on the inside of your pinky okay you will notice that when i'm drawing i use very short etching movements when i'm drawing with my pencil because that way i can create an accurate drawing now i am selecting the thickness of the brow and i'm using her natural thickness i'm not making her brow any thicker uh, than what it naturally is you want to go with their natural thickness and make sure that you're talking with them um, and if they want them to be a little bit thicker this is a good time to ask here i'm just cleaning up the brows you want to clean up any brow hairs that are obviously outside of the shape here so anything that you know for sure is going to fall outside of the shape those are the ones that you want to get rid of you can tweeze you can use an eyebrow razor um, whatever works best for you i find that i usually do a combination of both um, because that is what makes it look best in my opinion the tweezing allows me to be really accurate and it gives a clean look and the razor is good for very small kind of peach fuzz like hairs so i remove any brow hairs that are obviously outside of the shape that i'm going to create for her All right, so now we are going to be marking the brow ending. So you can use the corner of her nose through the corner and end of her eye and mark the brow ending there with your pencil. This is the easiest way to find the brow ending. You can um, mark that and then you're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. All right, then you're going to take your ruler and with the big legs, you're going to place it at point one and at point three. And then that's how you're going to get your point two. So you place it at point one and three. And then without moving your ruler, I'm sorry, your compass, you're going to then find your point two by placing it at point four and two once i find my point two i mark that on my ruler and then i'm going to go to the other side repeat the same thing on the other side with the same measurement you're going to get point five you place your compass on point three and that gives you point five you're gonna mark it there if you want to watch a very in-depth brow mapping video I also have another video available that shows this entire process broken down um, if you want to take some time to watch that now I'm getting the point six so I measure point two and three and then I mark the point six And I do the same thing on the other side. Now I'm teaching you how I use the string to mark. You can use string as well to mark and make straight lines if you don't want to 
uh, use the pencil and do it manually, you can use the string. Make sure that the bottom line is parallel to the top line and you're going to make your marking there. I then go over it with my pencil to strengthen the lines and make it nice and solid. Here you can see that I'm going over the white string marking to strengthen my lines and make them nice and solid. To get the tail, you're going to drag your pencil from point two to point three and allow it to drag along their brow bone. That's how you're going to get the right angle. Here I'm just strengthening the lines again, going over the lines that I created with the white string just to make sure that they are solid and very visible. So I'm going to repeat the same thing on the other side. Here you see that I'm starting with the bottom. Sometimes it's easier to start backwards when you're doing this line here. You can start from the tail and bring it up. And then you're going to draw your other line. Here, I already have the line marked with the ink string, so I'm just strengthening it a bit. And then for the tail again, I am just going to glide my pencil along the brow bone there to make sure that I'm using her bone structure. After I get the design right and it's looking good, I'm then going to clean up anything that needs to be cleaned up, make any changes that I need to make to the design, and of course I'm going to sit her up to make sure that the design is exactly what we're looking for because when the client is sitting down their face does not look the same as when they're sitting up because of gravity so you then want to make sure you set your client up and review your brow design to make sure that they're looking exactly how you want them to look any tweaks that you need to make can be made now Here I'm making small tweaks to her brows. This is a good time to double check on your tails as well to make sure that they're looking similar. You want to make sure that the tails are uh, having the same design because sometimes one tail can look very sharp and the other one can look round. And that's all because of our bone structure. Now is a good time to clean up the brows with an eyebrow razor. You just want to get any of the little peach fuzz that's around the design. I bring the brow design uh, right to my line. So that means that when I'm using the razor, I clean it up right to the line so that I can have a really clean and crisp brow shape. I am using a measuring tool to measure the thickness of each side. Um, sometimes I find this is helpful. If you have any doubts about it, you can use that measuring to make sure that they're the same. Now I'm just going over the brow shape with the client to make sure that she's happy and um, explaining how everything will work. You want to make sure that you let them know that the fronts of the brows are not going to be very boxy. That that's just a line for us to follow so we know that we're not going to be going any further than the lines that we've drawn. But the front of the brow will not be boxy. I'm now preparing um, to start the treatment. So I'm pulling her hair back, cleaning away any lines that are unnecessary that I don't need 
so that way my brow shape is nice and crisp and just preparing to begin the treatment all right so now we're getting into the eyebrow tattooing process i have changed my gloves i always use a fresh pair of gloves when i'm going to start the tattooing process you will notice that my machine is covered i always work with a covered machine that is a red flag number one when you see someone working with a machine that is not covered that is not safe i am uh checking my needle hang to make sure that my needle hang is exactly where i want it it's usually somewhere between 1.5 millimeters and 1.8 millimeters and i am taping the machine to create a barrier and seal between my machine and my plastic this tape also functions as a grip for your hands when you're working this is athletic tape and you can buy it anywhere um, you can buy it on amazon or the beauty angels website so this is an important part of the process the preparation of your machine and needle okay i am double checking everything to make sure that it's exactly how i want it i'm very specific about the tape on the machine i like it to be nice and tight then have my tray set up. As you can see, I only have the things that are going to be disposed of on my tray. I am mixing pigment in a single use cup here. I never ever put anything on my tray that is not going to be thrown away after the treatment. That's very important. Mixing up some color here. When you're mixing, you wanna make sure that you mix it really, really well because you don't want any color separation while you're working, okay? Body positioning is super, super important. You wanna make sure that you are comfortable when you are working. And you will see that I'm starting from the tail here. So, I have the machine between my pointer finger and my thumb. And my thumb is not doing any of the work. If you see my hand, you see that it's my pointer finger and my middle fingers that are doing the bulk of the work. Okay? Here you will see how I am doing a back and forth motion. And I'm actually only using um, a swinging motion toward myself right now as I'm working. All right, here's a little bit of a closer view for you. So I'm using a swinging motion down toward myself. And a lot of people wonder how to know if you're working at the right depth. Um, you can easily find out if you're working at the right depth by, by feeling a vibration in the hand that's stretching. All right, this part is important. After I do a couple passes on the tail, I am then going to wipe. I call this precision wiping. I'm only wiping a section to see if there's pigment there. There was not enough pigment, so I'm going to go over it again. This is super important because so many of you guys complain about losing your shape as you're working, and it's because you're not doing this part correctly, okay? You have to make sure that you wipe the section, not the whole thing, just a small part of it. And that way you can see if you're actually implanting pigment or not. Okay, that is super, super, super important. You wanna make sure that you're taking your time and you're not moving on to another section of the brow before locking in your shape. So even if this part takes a while, it's totally worth it and it's gonna make the rest of the process much much easier for you here i am again precision wiping when you're doing precision wiping you have to wipe either down or up notice how i wipe down into the brow notice that that's how i keep it nice and clean and then you can see i have implanted pigment there which is good I'm gonna strengthen the outside line a little bit more to make sure that I don't lose the shape. 
Again, this is super, super, super important. You do not want to rush through this this process. If you rush through this part of the process, you will lose your shape. And then you're going to have to brow map them all over again. And that's not what you want to do. So make sure that you're taking your time and you're implanting pigment. If you feel that you're not implanting the pigment, need to you need to check two things. One, your pressure. Maybe you're not using enough pressure. And the other thing is your angle. Are you holding your pen at a 90 degree angle? That's how you troubleshoot. All right, so here I'm going, I'm moving forward in the brow because I've locked in my shape. And I do this process all the way until I reach the front of the brow. And I don't skip any sections. So you're going to see how I work through this. And I'm still going to be going section by section without skipping any sections. I'm also overlapping sections. So a lot of you have a hard time with making the brows look even. And you have some areas that are darker than others. And that's because you are not overlapping properly. You have to overlap the brow sections. So that means that before you move on, you're not going to just skip and go to the next section. You're going to overlap. I like to overlap by 40 to 50% as I'm working to make sure that there is an even saturation of the brows. So I'm going to keep working like this until I get to the front of the brow. Okay, so when I'm working at the front of the brow, I make sure that I get that bottom line nicely in there. And I am checking to make sure that the shape is how I want it to be, that I have pigment there, that I'm not going to lose the shape. And then I place numbing cream. When you place the numbing cream, you can then go to the other side while this side is numbing. This is a secondary numbing cream which really penetrates well once the skin is open. I'm repeating my same process on the other side which is tattooing in the tail and then I'm checking. You can use a q-tip for this part. If you do use a q-tip you have to make sure that you use a dry clean q-tip when you're working so that you don't smudge your work. You're going to be stretching the skin here in a two-way stretch. I know everyone's always talking about a three-way stretch. Three-way stretch. With this part, a two-way stretch is necessary. Look at the way that my pinky is resting on her, the temple of her forehead, right? The temple area. And you see how my pointer finger is the one that's doing the work. I'm using my other hand to stretch her skin down. This is important. You want a good stretch, but a three-way stretch is not necessary right here on this section. So as you're going through and you're working on that arch area, you have to be careful because that area is where the bone is protruding a little bit at our arch. And it's easy to make that part too dark. So you want to make sure that you're not applying too much pressure at the tail or at the arch area when you're working because it can easily be too dark. I am using my precision wiping technique here to make sure that my template is in place. It's super important to do that. All right, I have switched positions and I'm, I'm now working from the client's right side and I'm going to be doing the rest of her brow from this side. I have easier access and it's much better for my body mechanics. And it also just gives me better access to her eyebrow. 
So I'm working here section by section and I'm going to keep doing that until I move forward. One of the important points that I want you to keep in mind is that you don't want the front of the brow to be very dark and you also don't want a harsh line on her eyebrow, especially from points one to point two because it makes it look really fake. So you're going to keep the front of her eyebrows nice and airy, nice and soft, not very intense with color because you want it to look soft. You want it to look natural. Here I am doing my precision wiping again, wiping from bottom to top and checking to see if there's pigment implanted, especially along my bottom line before I move forward. needs another round so I'm going over it again just to reinforce the shape you want to make sure that you are seeing enough pigment in the skin before you move on this is very important do not rush through this part we are not in a race here you don't need to rush if you rush through this part of the process you will pay for it big time later because you might lose your shape here you see how i'm stretching the skin with my hand i am using my thumb and my middle finger to stretch the skin and keeping it nice and taut that's very important when you're tattooing because you don't want the skin bouncing up and down while you're trying to tattoo it. It's going to cause unnecessary trauma to the client's skin and it's also not going to implant the way that you want it to. I am wiping finally and after I add a couple more touches, I'm then going to apply numbing cream to this side and I'm going to go back to work on the other side. So here I'm applying the numbing cream and then I am going to be working on the client's right brow again while this side numbs. One thing that you're going to notice after you numb the brow is that the skin is going to be white in color around the eyebrow and you're going to be able to see your shape much better once you have numbed the skin okay so now we're going back in for the second pass and i'm starting at the tail again i like to keep it consistent and start at the tail i think that you should also find something that works for you and that you find some consistency because when you find consistency as a beginner artist you're going to be more comfortable in your steps so here i'm just going to be going over the eyebrow again keeping true to the shape that i first put in and still working section by section and checking my work okay so here uh, the video is sped up a little bit this is not the pace that I work. This is two times faster than the pace that I work. So I just want you to keep that in mind as I'm, as you're watching the video. I do not want you moving this fast. Um, I am layering in the color here and you can see that the color is coming to life very, very nicely. And um, I am stretching the skin as I'm applying the color. I am using a pendulum motion, but I'm only going uh, toward me. I'm only hitting the skin toward me as I'm working this part. You wanna make sure that the area closest to point one is not totally filled in because it gives a very boxy look and that's not what we're going for. I usually don't give my clients a boxy brow start unless they have specifically requested the brows to be totally filled in when you're working here it's important to have a stretch and you're going to be pulling the skin upward as you can see i'm pulling it up um, so that way i have access and i am pulling it right over top of the brow bone when i'm working you want to make sure that you're only using the tip of the needle when you're tattooing. You don't want to be dragging the needle in your client's skin. You should be only using the tip of the needle to tattoo. Always, always, always remember that. 
You should also feel a slight vibration in your left hand if you're right-handed. You're going to feel a slight vibration in your left hand as you're working. And that means that you're working in the correct depth. Alrighty, so we are looking really, really good here. I am happy with the color. The results are looking really nice and it's looking soft and natural so far. So you'll notice that I use a spoolie to brush the brow hairs away so that I can check the pigment that has been implanted into the skin. It's the best way to really check to see if there's any light spots or any areas that need a little bit more attention. I love to keep my brush handy throughout the treatment and make sure that I'm using it to double check any areas. I then numb again and as this side is numbing, I'm going to go work on the other side. I'm cleaning the numbing off of this side and you can see that the skin looks a little bit white around the brow, which is totally normal. And I'm going to start the second pass on the client's left brow by again starting from the tail. Here you will see that I am stretching the skin and I have my pinky placed on her for support and I am working toward me here. If you're right-handed, you want to be extra careful when you're working on this side because it's easy to make this side, especially the tail, a little bit darker. So you want to make sure that you use a little bit less pressure when you're working on this side of the client, if you're right-handed. Because you don't want the tail to be much darker on this side than the other side. Always make sure to check through, make sure that there's no spots that need more color. If there are spots that need more color, you're going to add it and then check through and move forward. You're going to use the same process step by step, overlapping by 40 to 50% before you move on to the next section.
All right, so now we're back on the right side for the last pass that I typically do when I'm working. I usually just do three passes. So the last pass is really like your final inspection, I call it. And this is when you're going to be going through everything and adding color, making sure that you're paying attention to add color to any spots that need it and making sure that this is like your last kind of quality control spot. So you're going to be looking through everything, make sure that it's on point, um, making sure that there are no areas that need more color uh, before you finalize the brows. Um, one thing that I want you to keep in mind here is when you are working the skin, the, the brow will now take color very easily because you have already gone over this area quite a bit. So that means that you have to be very conscious to use light pressure on your last pass here because again, the color goes into the skin very, very easily as you're working here. So you want to make sure that you are not using too much pressure here because pretty much anything that you put in is going to go into the skin. So super light pressure here as we're working, not overdoing it, making sure that you're not trying to do too much right now. This is where you're just adding a little bit of your final touches. When I get to the front of the brow, I am using very, very light pressure. I make sure of it because I never, never want the front to be very harsh or square. That's important. All right, so we are nearing the end here. I am cleaning up the brows really well before I remove her headband and I'm going to sit her up. I always like to sit the clients up and take a look and this is our result, okay? She looks beautiful. The brows look amazing. The color is spot, spot on. Um, I'm really, really in love with it. Her skin took the color so well. Uh, she has young skin. It's healthy, uh, very easy to, to tattoo. I also didn't mention that I used a 3RL needle for this entire process. Um, and that's important. I did not use a 1RL. I used a 3RL from the brand uh, Vertex, which I really love. And um, and that's the needle that I prefer to use for most of my treatments. This process was a no outline eyebrow. We did not create an outline for her. We wanted to keep it nice and soft and make sure that everything is blended nicely. And we totally accomplished that mission here. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that it's helpful for you all. And uh, leave a comment below with any questions that you might have. If you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to leave a comment and I will respond to you in the comments. Thank you so much.